All right, guys. Welcome to the next code monk problem. The first medium level problem ever. First code monk medium level problem. Now I'm feeling good. I'm all pumped up. I've eaten my oats upma, and I'd suggest that you all eat and you're all at the top of your game while you're solving these problems because it goes by a lot faster. Otherwise, you just end up trying to solve it with a weary mind and you end up going in circles. But enough with the life advice. Let's just get into the problem. Cyclic shift. A large binary number. is represented by a string a of size n it comprises of zeros and ones naturally because it's a binary number you must perform a cyclic shift on this string firstly what is a cyclic shift this explanation defines it but basically it's rotating the string to the left by one now you perform that left shift an infinite number of times and each time you record the maximum possible value that maximum possible value is called b your task is to determine the number of cyclic shifts that have to be performed such that you can reach that maximum string b k times what does it mean i'll explain the question to you first let's have a look at the input and output naturally t is going to be the number of test cases 5 is the length of i input the number of characters in the binary string that is 5 in this case and 2 that is k is the number of times we have to hit the maximum possible string here we can see our initial string that's 10 101 1. now we've got to keep performing the left shifts until we hit the maximum number so if we perform one left shift we're going to get 01011 this first one is going to go to the beginning and every other character is going to be pushed to the left by one stage by one step 01011 another left shift gives us 10110 another left shift gives us 01101 one more left shift gives us 11010 if we perform a fifth left shift we're going to go back to our initial string so this is going to be the total number of unique strings we can get while left shifting now we've written all the binary values on the side and just by looking at those we can tell that this final string is the maximum possible string what does our question tell us our question tells us we've got to hit this maximum string twice so when we start from our first string we need to rotate it four times in order to hit the maximum string but now we've only got it once we've got to get our maximum string a second time so we've got to perform five more shifts one more shift will take us to the initial string and then four more shifts will take us here So we've got to perform a total of nine rotations if we want to hit one one zero one zero twice. Let's have a look at another string so as to get a little more clarity. Zero one zero one zero one. Now, if we perform one left shift, what do we get? One zero one zero one zero. If we perform a second left shift, we are going to go back to zero one zero one zero one. So here there are only two unique strings we can get, and if k is two, what will our answer be? One left shift will give us the maximum string one time. Then we've got to shift two more times to get it a second time. So our answer will be one plus two, that is three. Let's say k is three. What will our answer be? We shift it once to get one zero one zero one zero. Then we've got to shift it two more times to come back to this state, and we've got to shift it two more times to come back to this state a third time. So if k is three. our output will be five shifts now that we know what the question entails let's try to solve it head on to the coding link down below it takes you straight to the code monk page try to solve it and i'll explain the solution shortly so guys you may be thinking that it's an awfully simple problem first we identify the maximum string there are multiple ways to do that we'll get into that shortly after that we've reached it once and now to keep hitting it all we've got to do is add n so to reach it once we need four shifts now to reach it again we add 5 if k is 3 we add 5 again if k is 4 we add 5 again and so on now this is true for a lot of cases however sometimes it doesn't work if we have a look at this string right here 010101 there are only two unique states we hit the maximum number every two iterations Why is this string different from the previous one? That is because a pattern is repeating multiple times. 
Here, 0, 1 is repeating multiple times. It's repeating thrice in this case. This has a periodicity of 2 because every 2 times, we're going to get the same string. Let's say this was our string. Here, we can see 1, 0, 0 is repeating twice. The repeating unit is 1, 0, 0, which is why it has a periodicity of 3. If we have a look at our initial string, 1, 0 is present once. Here, 1, 0 is present twice but it's not present three times, only one is there. That's why we can't apply that rule here. This doesn't have any periodicity. So in order to solve this, we need to answer two questions. Question one, what is the maximum possible string? And question two, is there a periodicity? First things first, let's answer question A, question one. How do we find the maximum possible string? Now there are many ways to do it, we can identify the maximum cluster of ones and put that in the very beginning. But an easy way to do it is to simply shift it to the left n times. This also has a complexity of O of n. So we know if we shift it to the left, we're going to get these strings. All we do is record the maximum possible string. Here we can see this is going to be the maximum possible string. The next challenge is to identify the periodicity. Let's look at this string right here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let's start with 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. If we shift it to the left, we get 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and we record this value. This is our current max value. We're also going to record the iteration count. In this case, it's going to be 1. Now we shift it again to get 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And when we shift it a third time, we get to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 again. So our current iteration count is 3. The old iteration count was 1. So all we do is subtract 1 from 3 to get 2. 2 is going to be the periodicity. Once we got these values, we can easily return our answer. Now this right here is our code. I've taken the liberty of accepting our inputs and printing a new line after each test case. Max is initially going to be an empty string. And our periodicity will initially be minus 1. Let's now iterate through our string. So for i in range, it's going to be the length of s, that is n. If max is less than s, s is our string, then what do we do? We say max is equal to s. And we record this position in a variable called, let's say, d, d for displacement. If l if, that is else if, max is equal to s, what does this mean? We're encountering maximum for a second time. So our periodicity will be our current iteration count minus the old recorded iteration count for the previous max. And we can break out of it because we need no more information after this. Now we've got to update our string. Otherwise, we're going to be checking the same string over and over again. So we perform a left shift by performing two substring operations. Lastly, we check if there is periodicity or not. If there is no periodicity, that is if p equals equals minus one, what do we say? We simply print d plus k minus one times n. Why k minus one? D shifts takes us to the maximum string one time, the first time. Now we don't need to hit it k times, we need to hit it k minus 1 times because we've already reached it once. That's why k minus 1. Else, what do we do? We print d plus k minus 1 is going to be times p in this case. That's because we know there's some periodicity. Let's see if this works. Sample test cases have been passed. And once we hit submit, Every test case has been accepted. Guys, that's the solution to the problem cyclic shift. If you like the solution, make sure to leave your comments down below and make sure to hit the golden trio. It's going to pop up on your screen right here. Like, subscribe, and the bell icon. You'll get notified for every future CodeMonk video as well. It's been Vivek, guys. A bomb solving this problem for you all. And I'll see you all next time.